Thank the Lord for being here. Thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy that he's bestowed on us. Thank you, the Lord, because we are leaning on the everlasting arm. Amen. So glad to be here. Man, it's always crowded. Wow, it's packed out. Well, amen. All right. Amen. Uh, tonight, uh, I want to point out that how we can affect people or we can affect uh, a person, individuals. Uh, and the best example to me is uh, Aiken. Uh, and that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Is uh, I'm going to start out talking about him. And we're going to go to Joshua. And uh, I'm going to give you a little background history before I go into scriptures. Now, the children of Israel had just defeated uh, Jericho. And Jericho was a walled city. Uh, and it was a, a big city. And because of the children of Israel and the fear of them, they had closed it up to where nobody can come in and go out. And this city is walled and the door is shut. So I'm going to say this. If there's one person in there, you can't get in there. And it's not like today where we got helicopters and missiles and airplanes. This was back in the day where they didn't have that. So there was no way of getting there. God gave them that city Amen. because God defeated And he told them. He told Joshua he would give it to them. And he did. And they defeated him. Now they're coming back and they all, you know, geeked up. They all geeked up and uh, because God told them that he was going to give them the land, possess the land. And so now they just, they're, they're ready. They're ready to fight. And so uh, Joshua sends some spies over to AI. And uh, they come back and they're like, well, we don't need all all." the whole, you know, don't bring everybody over there, just two or three thousand, you know. And the way they defeated Jericho, they really didn't need two or three thousand. And then they only needed just, you know, they didn't need a whole lot is what I'm saying, because God really handed it over to them. So what had happened was they're, they're told by Joshua, who was told by God, not to take anything. Only thing that was to remain was uh, Rahab, uh, the harlot, and her, uh, her household. That was it. Everything else was supposed to, uh, was not supposed to be taken as spoil. And I want to point this out. Uh, this is at Joshua the seventh chapter. First verse. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the occurred thing. Achan, the uh, son of Carmi, Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, the tribe of Judah, took the accursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. See how it was just one man? But God's anger was towards the whole congregation, as if everybody had done it. Well, in the Scripture before 19, 
It said, but all the silver and the gold, the vessel of brass and iron, are consecrated unto the Lord. They should come into the treasury of the Lord. Right. So he stole from God, Amen. okay? Uh, and God was not pleased. And they killed and destroyed everything. Everybody destroyed, they destroyed the women, the children, the ox, everything. Uh, but Achan took this garment and gold and silver and hid it amongst his, uh, his stuff in his tent. And if you go to, um, to the, uh, the same chapter, and after they fight Ai, 36 men are killed because God was not with them. And Joshua was a little confused like I would be. I mean, the Lord was with us. We just defeated, defeated a, a, a walled city. And now we can't even, this little bitty city, we can't even, you know, so Joshua goes down, not only him, but the elders, they uh, rent their clothes and they put dirt on their heads, and they're praying to God. And in the uh, 10th verse of the same chapter, the Lord says unto him, Get thee up, where thou liest thus upon thy face. Israel has sinned. And they have also transcends against the covenant which I have commanded them. For they have taken, they have even taken the accursed thing and have stolen and dis disassembled among, and they have, I mean also, and they have put it even among their stuff. So he's saying they, right. plural. Uh, and all it was was one man. One man affected the whole congregation of Israel. And I'm going to skip down. Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit. Uh, God tells him how we're going to find this man because he ain't coming forward. Okay. Because, first of all, we're going to destroy him. Because he's got to be put away from the congregation because this is a holy, and we don't want sin among us. So they go tribe by tribe, man by man, family by man, family by family, and tribe by, oh, uh, excuse me. Tribe by tribe, family by family, man by man. And when they finally get to him, uh, he tells what he done. That's not my point. But my point is, in the uh, 20, 20, uh, fourth uh, verse of the same chapter, and Joshua and all of Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerar, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, and his daughters, his ox, his ass, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had. And if I want to bring down to the uh, next verse. And Joshua says, in other words, you have troubled us. This day you're going to be troubled. And they stoned him and burnt him. Not only him, but everything that pertained to him. So this one man's sin put
put a burden on the congregation. 36 men died that didn't have to die. Then on his sons and daughters, and even the animals. It's not the, you know, uh, God punishes the animals because when Noah, in the day of Noah, both man and animal, creeping thing, everything died. Uh, God preserved, but everything died because of man. So this is what I'm trying to tell you, how one person can affect a whole bunch of people. And in Genesis, uh, no, that's Numbers, excuse me. Numbers, I'm thinking of uh, Korah, how he persuaded 250 princes, well-to-do people, to go against Moses. Because, I mean, they were Levites, but it seemed like that wasn't just enough. So they went up against Mo Moses, and what happened again? Everything that pertained to those men, uh, Korah, the earth swallowed them up, and they burnt, they went to the pit, right then and there. God was, I mean, he, people think that he's playing now, he's just long suffering, that's what he is. But it's the same, it's the same God. Uh, then I want to go to, uh, well, <laughs> the best example is Adam. Adam. Uh, and I'm going to turn to that. Let's go to that. That's uh, Adam, I mean, that's uh, Genesis 2. Adam's sin affected the whole world. Humanity. Uh, ooh. Excuse me. And 2 and 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat. For in that day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So there was a commandment there to Adam. And God had promised him, the day you ate, the day, that's the day you're going to die. And if we go down to the third chapter, sixth verse, all I want to pick out of there is, I mean, it tells what it was pleasant to her and all that stuff, but all I want is she took the fruit of, thereof and did eat and gave it to her husband, which is Adam, with her, and he did eat. So... Here we got again the sin of disobedience. And the punishment affects not only Adam, not only his wife, but it affects us too. Right. We're his descendants. Amen. Okay, so there again is one man's sin affects a lot of people. Amen. Uh, which reminds me, I know a person that they backslid. Because they backslid, they didn't teach their children the ways of God. You know, uh, didn't push them to go to Sunday school. And we as people, we get our children ready for the world, for them to grow up. But the most important thing, we just seem to skip by it. And I'm looking at them now, and they're just doing exactly, they do what the parents do. They're not ready for eternal life. I 
also have a friend who told me he regretted not bringing his son. Now, he's not saved. His son in church or his child in church because of the life they were living and the choices that they were made. And it's too late because that child died. But he, re he regrets not bringing him up in Sunday school. This is what, how you can affect even your loved ones. That's, those are bad examples. But there are some good, good examples. Uh, number one good one is, is Abraham. Uh, God said, God said, I know he's going to teach his children and his household the ways of the Lord. And he's going to be a great man because of this. So you can affect, and I'm, I'm, I'm putting it to children. You will affect, even if, even if you get saved at a late age and your children are all grown, they should see a difference yes. in the way you were, yes. in the way that you are now. It's a witness. It's a witness to bring them, because you, you want them to, the, to escape of what happened to Korah. You want them to escape the punishment of sin. You don't have to die in your sin. Amen. But if they don't know it, what are they going to turn to? They're going to turn to whatever their parents were doing. If their parents, you know, whenever they were up against the wall, drank a little something, they take the ease off, then that's what they're going to do. They're going to do something to take the ease off because they don't know. But what I'm saying is how that we in the church, we can affect people because people are watching our lives. They are. They're watching our lives and they're seeing how we go through tests and trials and how we look. If you look like you, you've been through the war, and you look like you just barely making it. I wouldn't want it. That's not a good witness. But if you are happy because you're saved, God has cleaned you up, God has put, taken you out of the miry clay and gave you, uh, you used to have the I can't help it. Now you can, you got power. You can walk the streets of Cassopolis. You'd be surprised how many people in Cassopolis know about holiness. They either been, came to the Sunday school. Sure. I was just talking to someone uh, not too long ago. I told them it was unfair. They know the truth, but they won't send the children to Sunday school. So when that child has problems, you know, they don't know where they're going to go, what they're going to do. Right. And I told them that was, that was very, that's very unfair. Amen. You know the truth. And I'm just saying to us as saints, we have something that is great. Yes. Keep it. Yes. Be a witness wherever you are. It's, it's drawing up to the last days. And it's almost time to get out of here. Be a good witness for the Lord. Be, uh, because you make an effect. You, make, you will make an effect, whether good or bad. Can God say that about you? That I know, fill in the blank, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, will teach their family, their household, their children. Will they teach them? The ways of God. The scripture says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's, not, and when he's old, he will not depart. Doesn't mean that they're going to get saved. But it's going to be up here. Right. And a lot of times that does guide them morally in decisions. But they still need the Holy Ghost. And you can be that witness to them. Anyway, that's, that's all I have to say tonight.
Let's receive uh, Sister Constance with a hearty amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Well, I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I didn't sleep until the storms was over. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. That was some kind of night. <laughs> it was absolutely horrible. <laughs> But thank you, Jesus. We're here, and Cass hardly got hit with anything. And I was, like, praying for all these people. You know, we have to pray. You know, sometimes God, God knows who's praying and what we're doing. But I tell you, that was some kind of night. But I'm so glad that sun comes out in the morning. Hallelujah. Amen. What a good word. Um, I tell my children, you know, just to expound on just a little bit of what you taught, I used to tell my children, I said, everything you do in life affects somebody else's life. Right. And I even take it to the school. I said, when I get them little bad ones, you know, the real ones, that is bad. <laughs> I said, don't you know that's going to affect your mother when they call you and such and such? But I'm talking on what he's talking about. Everything we do in life affects somebody else's life, whether it's good or bad. Deacon Scott, what a good word. What was your, uh, what was your title? <laughs> Amen. Anyway, it was a good word. Okay, amen. Tonight, I'm going to um, come out of uh, Isaiah 40 and 20 through 21 through 31. Wow, you know, our pastor is kind of uh, a consolation that he came on this uh, same scripture uh, uh, twice in, in less than a week, and I kept saying, Lord, have mercy, what do I do? But anyway, it's totally uh, a, a, a little turnaround of what he was teaching, but I, I was glad to know that we're on the same page with something. Amen? All right. Amen. Isaiah 40, uh, 21 through 31. Are you praying for me? Hallelujah. I feel tall today, Sister Shalon. And I got on, got, I don't hardly got no heels on. Maybe it's that, all that lightning that was going on making me feel like I was somebody, Lord, if you come right now, I'm going to be ready. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm going to take my time a little bit tonight. I got a little bit of time. Not, I will not be past 25 minutes, I'm sure. A short message, but much needed as, as God has given me his word. Amen. Have you not known, have you not heard, have you not been told you from the beginning, have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as curtains, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. That bringeth the princes to nothing, he maketh the judges, judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be shown. Yea, their stock shall not be rooted in the earth, and he shall also blow on them, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then will ye liken me? Or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Let your eye, let, lift up your eyes on high, and behold who has created this, these things, that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by name, by the greatest of his might, for that he is strong in power, not, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faileth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. Hallelujah. 29. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young shall utterly fall. 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Right. Hallelujah. The message tonight is wait on the Lord. And the other subject is, which is the real message, an act of faith. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Right. Amen. An act of faith. Wait, I say, on the Lord. 
Isaiah is a writer here in uh, 40, and he is regarded as to be one of the greatest prophets of the Bible. You know, sometimes even me, when I hear the pastor, minister, or speaker says, go to the book of Isaiah, I kind of get excited. You know, I'd be like, okay, Isaiah, there's a lot going on in Isaiah. And uh, one reason why is because um, it, we are, that I'm intrigued by that particular book is because Isaiah prophesied many things to come. Amen. Isaiah's prophecies uh, cover many themes, and that includes the sovereignty of God, that includes the Lord of hosts, that includes the coming of the Messiah, the, su su the suffering uh, servant, the judgment and restorations, and the future glory of Zion. Amen? All right. Isaiah. Amen? Here in chapter 4, Isaiah is given a proclamation of the comfort to come. Amen? Here, the passage of scripture is coming from the prophet Isaiah and is addressing the weary and the worn out Israelites or the people who have been in exile from uh, their native uh, homestead. Amen? Right. Amen. Exile. Let's use a the definition. There's two of them here. One is the man's definition, which is, is the state of being barred from one's native country, typically for political or punitive reasons. The Biblical's definition goes a little bit further. It says, in ba is banishment, the state of being expelled from one's native country or place of residence by authority and for forbidden to return either for a limited time or eternity or somewhat forever. Amen? <laughs> As a reminder of these scriptures, uh, the Israelites are in exile because they refuse to trust in God. Um, instead of... Instead, of they, instead, they had put their trust in the kings and, and different false gods and so, so, and so on and so forth and chose to rely on their own abilities uh, rather than God's. Amen? Amen? How many of us know that um, that is our old nature? Once we get saved, you don't rely on your own ability to do things as far as your soul. Amen? That is definitely a red flag. Amen? Uh, I say the, I, the word I... Uh, is, is something that should be in our vocabulary. It's something that we shouldn't take lightly when we start talking about I believe, I this, and I that. Amen. It just doesn't work in salvation. There is no I. It is him. It is his. It is the Lord thy God. That's right. And that's who we're being directed by, all right? right. So the people here had broken uh, the promise of God's covenant that they had sworn to in Deuteronomy 28. And that was to obey God's commandments. Uh, as we still have commandments today to obey, amen? God promised to punish Hezekiah and his people for their sins through, through allowing them to be in exile in Babylon. But God hasn't abandoned them. Not yet, anyways. <laughs> and also, keep in mind that the contents of the scriptures is to provide the children, the children of Israel comfort and assurance of their time in exile, amen? They, they refused to understand that they did have some comfort, they just didn't take it, amen? Our focus scripture that we will be kind of expounding on later would be verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not be faint. Uh, you may hear me, I, I think it was Minister Scott last week was saying a repetition of the scripture, and that's just to clarify God's word so we can get an understanding, amen? amen. Um, I will expound more on that scripture later on. But in verse 21 and 22, it says, have you not heard, have you not, have you not known, have you not heard, have you not been told from the beginning talking to the children of Israel, have you not understood from the foundation of the earth it is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and that happens thereof are as grasshoppers that stretch it out, uh, the heavens of the, as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. In verse 21, it is, talking, it is asking a question, do you know, have you heard? Repetition, he's constantly asking him this question uh, about the greatness of God, do you understand the knowledge? Do you understand the knowledge? Do you understand the knowledge and the wisdom and the power since he has begun? Not when he is. He is the beginning and the end. But have you heard? 
Verse 22 emphasizes the power in the, the, the entity of God and how he sees us as grasshoppers, as tiny little images or specks. That's all we, kind of what we look like compares Comparison to him. This is a way of saying that God has created the whole world, the universe, everything in it is in it, is his, and so on and so forth. Amen. God is an awesome God, isn't he? Yes, I love that God speaks through Isaiah and uh, he and he asked him some questions. And not only did he ask him some questions, he started painting this beautiful, beautiful picture of who God really is. Amen. He kind of laid it all out. Do you know? Do you know where he is? He, he, he sits above a, a circle on the earth. He looks down, and he has done all these things, that man. And verse 27, he says, Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment has passed over for, for, from my God? Here in this verse, the, they are starting to complain and accuse God of all their problems and their dismays and so on and so forth. But in reality, God is chastening them. Uh, and and they're, as they, are, they have a little minute or a lack of faith in what he is doing. He had fa they had failed to think through what God really was doing for them. They didn't trust him enough. They, they went another direction, amen, and, got, and applied it in their own lives. They started doing things their own way, amen. This may sound similar to us in 2024. How many times have we seen... Uh, here lately in churches where folks have just turned and start wanting to do their own thing. Not listening to what you've known. You can be saved. Some have been saved 40, 50 years, 10, 15. If you've been saved a year and you start deciding to do your own thing, you have already failed yourself. Amen? That's right. Uh, then, uh, and, and in verse 28 it says, Has I not known, has I not heard that the everlasting God, thy, the Lord, the creator, and the ends of the earth fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching and understanding. Oh, God, I thank you. In verse 30, uh, let's go to Psalms 30 and 5. It says, for his anger endured but a moment. And in his favor is what? Life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. God is faithful to, to his word and his promises is to us. Yeah. Uh, and Psalms is saying that there's an assurance in everyone who is weary and weeping, uh, believers, to keep their focus on God. He will restore our joy no matter what you're going through. You might have some tears, you might have some cries, you might have some trouble. But God will restore you if you would just wait and trust him. Amen. Just as he would have done with them. They wouldn't have wound up in exile had they just trusted in God. Amen. Uh, an act of faith. Wait, I say, on the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Uh, 29, he says, he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. I think the pastor talked about that on Sunday, I believe. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. Weighing God and having faith in God is what our journey is all about. Amen. I say it all the time, God's not a popcorn God, he's a pot roast God. Sometimes we have to wait, you know, it's slow cooking, amen. Many have accused God, even we have, of, of our issues in life, our financial issues, we, why me, why you do this to me, God? I've seen people lose their children, God took my children, so on and so forth. But we have not to, we, we, we have not uh, uh, to waver from what we know of him. We know that God is able. And it's just like those Hebrew boys when they went into the fire furnace. If he doesn't say, uh, save us, we know that he can. Amen. If God doesn't deliver you from some of our issues in life, death is going to come. Why blame God for a baby dying? You don't know what God has planned. And you're going to blame him. But my thing is, trust in him. He's, he's got it all in his plans. Amen. Why, why would you not trust him? It says he is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. we got to trust that. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 13 and 5, it says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's right. Repeat that again. For I, he has said, I will never, need, never leave you nor forsake you. We might leave him, and we may forsake him as they did, but God said, I'll never leave you for, or forsake you. 
but be content in such things you have. I have heard it many times that people have said, if God never does another thing for me in my whole life, he's already done enough because he saved my soul. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But as the pastor has said this past Sunday, he had mentioned in 1 Corinthians 5, 15, 19, it says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of man, all men most miserable. But don't we know that some of our blessings are not just going to come at the end. God gives us blessings now. It's just like even here, even I'm talking to us as a whole, as a family, as a church of God, we ought to know that some blessings come even though it's not at the end. Because why? Because you are faithful in your walk with God. Because we are faithful in walking with God, he will grant you some blessings right now. He will grant you some good things, amen. Not, not, not everything is bad. What they, a person always used to say, trouble don't last always, amen. It's only but for a moment, hallelujah. All right, and verse 29 speaks of him giving strength to the weary and increasing the power of the weak. It tells us that he cares for us. Why? Since we do grow and faint and at times, and, and, and he, he has the energy and strength to, of abundance, so not only does he lack strength, but he is the one that supplies the strength to us. If we would just what? Wait. Wait on God. Just wait. It's not going to hurt all the time. You know, kid come in, I got a boo-boo. Can you give me a band -aid? Can I do this and that? Oh, wait a minute. It's, it's going to be all right. It's, it's a cut. Go on, lick it. I tell the kids that. Lick it. It'll go away. You know? <laughs> We're not going to give you no Band-Aid for a scratch. Amen? And that's sometimes, sometimes we have scratches. And we did because we don't want to wait on God. Amen? There are a few scriptures that I want to uh, give you. I probably could give it at the end, but I'll give it now, that talk about strength. And that's, you can write this down if you want. If not, I'll give it to you after church if you don't get it. Uh, Philippians 4, 11 through 13, Psalms 28, 7 and 8, and Psalms 84 and 5. In your own reading, read that. It states in 30, in verse 30, even the most physical fit of men are weak and limited in power. That leads us to this beautiful scripture of verse 31, key verse. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagle, eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. This is what God's strength can, can and will do for those who wait on him. Amen. They that wait on the Lord is understood in a natural sense or more clear language, in, in modern language, should be as, could be as, and they that continue to work for the Lord shall renew their strength. Right. You have to keep working. Right. You know, you can't be trouble. I'm not going to church because things ain't going right. I'm not going to go say hi to the say. I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to do. You have to continue. I'm not going to witness to folks because I'm, I just got a bad way today. Well, get yourself together. Get on your knees and start praying so you can work like God told you to. Amen. Hey, hallelujah. We have to understand that the word God still wants us working until the day we what? Amen. Die. Amen. Or until the day of rapture, we should be working in some capacity for the Lord. Amen. To wait on the Lord is a way of saying that we have faith in God. All right. It takes faith to wait. It takes faith. It takes trust in God to, to live this life. You know, without it, without faith and trust in the Holy Ghost, we have nothing. That's the reason why he gives us the gift. Amen. All right. Amen. And in and, and almost anything that we are in need of, God is, uh, is to help us in our lives, whether it's good or bad. Whether we're having a good time in the Lord, or whether it's a bad time. I'm going to tell you something. Every, any situation that we are in, it's going to be all right. It's a good time because without the Holy Ghost, without God being a part of us, it's a really bad time, even if you're having a good time in God or a bad time in your situations. Amen? We're not, we find ourselves depending on God to take, take us through. Faith and trust go hand in hand, and they work together. Amen? And verse, here in verse 31, it states, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. If we diligently exercise in faith and, and, and waiting on him, then God will work in, our, uh, work, work in our behalf, amen, if we would diligently seek him, if we would diligently trust him. God will work in our behalf. Uh, they sing a song, faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Then it says, you don't need a whole lot, just use what you got. Well, uh, here in the scripture, we learned that the children of Israel, they didn't use what they got. 
They didn't have the faith. They went a whole other direction, and, uh, and they found themselves in, the, uh, and in a very uncomfortable and unstable walk with God. Amen? Uh, going to exile, that's nothing small. But because you just will not trust him, he said, like I said in Deuteronomy, he said, keep, uh, keep my commandments. And they, they didn't do that. Amen? Just as God has, abandoned, has, has not abandoned them, he's not going to abandon us, you guys. He's there for us. We just got, we got, we got to know that. Yeah. And if you... You know, if the Holy Ghost is working, but you know what? I am hot up here. I don't know about y'all, and I can't take this jacket off. But if, if we would just let God work in us, you know, if we would just let God work with us, if we will work with God, he works in us, but we got to work with God. God doesn't have to work with us, but he does. He has mercy on us, amen? There are times um, that we have tests and trials, and we, they seem like they're unbearable. But God, in, in, in a whole lot of prayer, have you ever not went through? Yes. I don't know anybody in here that can really just say that I was going through something and I didn't see a way out. Oh, God didn't take me out. Or not so much as take you out, but take you through. Right. Amen. Because you waited on it. Amen. Right. Uh, uh, they shall mount up with wings as an eagle. I'm almost done. They, have, well, mount, they, they shall mount up with wings of an eagle. This phrase, mount up with wings of an eagle, symbolizes strength, freedom, endurance, and the list goes on. It means that we have, we have a substance inside of us, amen. Uh, when we walk and talk good about God's way, he would give us strength, guidance, in, in, in what we are in need of, amen. If we would just walk with them, if we would continue to walk with them. Uh, I see many of us out here today, and everybody in here, for what I can see, has a Holy Ghost. And have you never, have you ever, I felt, I have felt sometimes where I didn't know where to turn. But when I began to seek God, when I began to talk to God, Amen. in that secret closet, why do you think they talk about that closet? Because there's a way, there's a place where you can go. I ain't really no secret closet in your house, you understand? Right. But the, the way that you go to God is right. between you and him. And he will listen to you. He will hear your cry. Hallelujah. In Psalm 34, said, he, said, he said the man cried out. And God delivered him from what? Part of his problems? All of his troubles. Hallelujah. Because he trusted him. Amen. We have to trust him just like the man. We got to cry out to God and see when he answer you. Right. He might not answer you right now. Right. But for what I understand, God is an untimed God. Yes. He's not, oh no, he's never too late. We might not, we might not want to wait on, but he's an on-time God. Amen. Amen. They should run and not be weary. They should walk and not faint. Those who wait on God, they won't, they won't be weary. Uh, they won't have, they will run that, we can run that race and save folks without uh, being overwhelmed because we know that God is by our side. You know, I, you know, I, I can remember vividly, uh, I think about a week or two, I vividly, vividly saw my life before I got saved, and I, I just began to glorify God because I knew without him, I was overwhelmed. Life had taken me through a storm. You know, life was taking me through a storm before I got saved. But 36 years, oh, no, I'm not leaving God. Ain't no way in the world. Nobody, I, as far as I can see, can convince me or even uh, and, and, and persuade me that there isn't a God that will keep you. Because I'm proof of it. Amen. Aren't you proof? Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Through the Holy Ghost is something that will lead and guide us. It's not to lead us in the wrong way, but it will lead you to the right way. Amen. The Holy Ghost is something that guides us. When we receive the Holy Ghost, even though sometimes we might not understand it, about everything, we're not going to never understand everything about this thing. It's new. It's almost new every morning. You wake up. Something, not even you know. You have a you have days that go by. You get up and go to work. I see Christian uh, uh, minister uh, Jackson almost every morning on my walk, and I say, oh, you know, I would if I was if I was weary and not and not thinking right. I was like, well, I guess God ain't came because uh, there's brother Christian, <laughs> amen. But not so, you know. Uh, those things, every day we have routines we go through. Those are simple things. Those are things that we go through. But every day that we get up and praise God, it should be to glorify God. It should be a glorified time with him when you're praying. I know sometimes I woke up and had some popcorn prayers, like, oh, Lord, I think I pray. General prayer. And I said, oh, I could have did better, but I'm in a hurry. <laughs> but I, may, I try to make up for that in prayer, amen, because I trust him. 
in my closing, I told you it'd be a short, I'd be done. I told you I'd be done in less than 25 minutes. In my closing, I want to give you this scripture. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. If you are working for the Lord, I had an individual tell me today that a saint was telling them, in a, not in Cass office, it's somewhere else, and they were saying that they felt that they wasn't heard or they wasn't, the, the cry, the same cry these Israelites was giving to God, that's a cry. Oh, you don't know my problem. You're not, you're not thinking about me. Not. I said, let me tell you something. There ain't, there ain't no way that you can be in a church and not have something to do. The work of God is outside of these four walls. It's not always an inside. God, God, I thank you for the cleaners. Lord, I thank you for the, the, the uh, one working the, the tele, telephone and all that, whatever this is, the <laughs> internet and all that. I'm not one that can do that. So that is not my work. But what my work is, I'm working in it. Um, even though I understand, even the older people, you know, they've done a lot of work. But we can't expect them to come in here and do maintenance and stuff like that. They've already done the work. So let God work with them by prayer. Praying for the saints. You know, uh, there's many of them who are doing that because they've done their work. But still, there's still work to do. Prayer is work. So what do we need to do? I say to you, wait on God. He is never going to steer us wrong. 36, I'm going to use it, 36 years. And I have to tell you, I don't remember a time I was bore, bored in the Holy Ghost. I have never been bored being saved. I had a person, my sister one time told me, she said, Boy, that's got, don't you ever, no, it wasn't my sister was number. They said, man, you, will, you, you uh, live a boring life. No, I don't. I live a holy life. Hallelujah. I'm satisfied with Jesus. Amen. I want to give you that scripture one more time, and then I'm going to close. Therefore, my brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, let us stand. Amen. 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 Amen.